Hey guys, welcome back to another redstone video. Today I'm going to show you a simplified version of the furnace array design from a couple of days ago. After I released my videos, Zuma contacted me and he had already a much simpler version that didn't have the same functionality though. So the design he had um, didn't have the precise adjustment of items via dropper counter. Um, he just stored the items in droppers or hoppers below the furnace. Uh, which happened to work out really well to repair one diamond tool. So instead of having a precise amount of items, it was in the ballpark of repairing a diamond tool and it just worked out pretty much the same for that purpose. Um, but you couldn't adjust it, for example, to work with a different amount of XP. But for what he wanted, it was perfect. I don't want to spoil Zuma's design, so I probably have to wait for his video about it. But I took some inspiration and came up with my own one, just a bit different. While the Zoom's design was still using buttons in order to reset the furnaces, this one is reset by taking out items. So here you can reach the furnaces. I put carpet here on top in order to hide away the ugly comparator. Because the comparator is really necessary uh, since you need to take the signal strength from the furnace. So basically it gets reset by taking out an item, the signal strength falls below 15 and that starts the whole process. Maybe to recap it, what the system is all about. So the idea is that we smelt cactus until a certain amount of XP is reached and then the system shuts off. Uh, so we, here we got some diamond pickaxes. If I now go into survival mode maybe and take out an item, you can see this pickaxe is now getting fully repaired and then the furnace also starts smelting items again and this would go on until uh, you would reach a certain level again which is enough to repair another diamond pickaxe and then the system stops. So if we take a look at the other slices that are ready to be used, you can see that items are stored in the dropper, hopper and furnace here. So this is how we basically reached a certain amount of XP, which is in the ballpark of repairing one diamond pickaxe. Then, yeah, once you take out the item, uh, the system picks it up, starts this observer clock, and yeah, triggers the, uh, the dropper, the item is shot out. You could either put now a water stream at the bottom or lava to get rid of the items. So once the dropper is completely empty, this one is getting emptied right now, then the comparator turns off, Observer picks it up and the observer clock or part of the observer clock is pushed back and now the dropper could be filled up with new items again. I also copied over one slice so we can see the redstone a bit better. There's not much to say about it, it's fairly compact and of course it's one white tileable. So maybe one more word on the supply of items to be smelted, of course we're using cactus and fuel using bamboo here. I didn't bother adding another cactus and bamboo farm like in my last videos. I just put down some storages. Uh, with this one here it shouldn't be a problem at all to put a water stream on top. That's the only thing I wanted to mention. So I'm using a line of hoppers again but water stream should definitely be possible here. The banners of course are only decoration to hide away. The, in my opinion ugly hoppers a little bit. You could also place another one here but that almost hides away the furnace as well. So it's a bit of a problem here with this system that the furnace is hidden away, but there's really no way around yeah, having the comparators right next to the furnace because yeah, there's only so much sides we could use. Uh, we already need a hopper at the top, at the back, and yeah, at the bottom another hopper, of course, so that's really the only output that was left over. Um, you could, in theory, also remove the carpet here and see... Oops, there was... That wasn't intended to see uh, the furnace, but in my opinion, actually looks almost a bit better if you hide this redstone away and just take a look at the lamps. So once the lamp turn on, that indicates that the furnace is completely filled up, the item uh, and the XP is ready to be taken out. So to sum it up, this is just a simplified version of the furnace array. You can't really adjust the amount of XP as precisely as with the other one, which was also kind of cool, and also doesn't have this nice interface like the other one. That's a few downsides, but of course it's much more compact and less effort to build. And there's even one more huge advantage of the simplified furnace array. It's kind of foolproof. Nobody can accidentally press any button. System will only start smelting again once it has reached 
full level and somebody takes out one item. Alright, and I'm gonna show you how you can build this and also discuss some alternatives. Right, so we need a furnace, hopper below, and then the dropper could either face downwards or could also have it face this way and shoot over the comparator. This is pretty reliable. I don't think it's 100% reliable, but like 99.9% .9 of the items get shot over the comparator. So you could have a water stream here in the back. Uh, personally, I would prefer to have the water stream below, but it's kind of up to you. Alright, then the next thing we need is the comparator in front of the furnace. But we also need a container block. Since 1.14, you can place comparators on top of cauldrons. So like this. So this wouldn't work in 1.13. In 1.13, if you still play that, you could use a dropper instead. So like this. Uh, only downside is that it clicks sometimes if this turns on. But apart from that, it would also work. Okay, then we need a block. Place reds and dust on top. And here we need another comparator. Then a block in front. And here the redstone lamp. Then I use carpet to hide away the redstone, so here we need a double carpet, or a slapping carpet, so like this. Of course we need an input, the fuel and the items. And then we need a note block and a piston. So this would also work in 1.13, that note block functionality was already added there. Okay, then we also need a normal piston now, right there. And here, downwards facing observer. Okay, then we can actually continue on this side. Also place downwards facing observer, comparator, and another piston here. Then here we need another block right next to this uh, dropper. There's an observer pointing into that block. And here we have the downwards facing observer. Okay, so in case you shoot the items down, uh, you also want to align it. So here we need the extra block so this uh, piston can push everything back. Uh, you might also wonder why I don't just put the piston maybe here and wire it like this. Well, now if the <laughs> uh, dropper receives an item again, this would be also picked up by the uh, comparator, activates the piston and the item is immediately shot out again. So that's why we have to two blocks here so it doesn't matter if this piston fires okay so if you shoot the items down you probably want to align it because if you push would push over the block then you can't have the water stream below so that's why we just use trapdoor like this and now to prevent the items uh, from landing here on the side of the trapdoor we just place another one here so like this i hope you liked this video and thanks a lot for watching see you next time bye bye